As the war on Syria approaches its 10th anniversary, fighting has somewhat abated. Sporadic clashes have replaced a full-on proxy war between regional powers that saw fighters from all corners swarming the country in a NATO-backed regime change effort to overthrow the government of Bashar al-Assad. Hundreds of thousands have been killed, millions displaced, and now Western sanctions aim to cripple what remains. All under false pretenses, carefully choreographed by politicians and mainstream media who made every effort to present foreign fighters linked to groups such as Al-Qaeda as so-called moderate rebels, crying out for Western democracy. Eventually, a new outfit emerged, the White Helmets, a humanitarian disaster response group working in rebel-held areas to save innocent civilians, a perfect antithesis to the foreign fighters. Soon, however, inconsistencies began to appear. Behind every effort to champion the new humanitarian group lay a trail that linked to foreign-backed efforts to overthrow the government. The White Helmets are effectively an um, intelligence construct created by um, the US and the UK predominantly operating inside Syria, uh, embedded exclusively with armed extremist groups and terrorist groups um, dominated and led by Al-Qaeda or Nusra Front. Journalists on the ground like Vanessa Beely have worked tirelessly to expose groups like the White Helmets and their links to NATO powers. However, it appears that mainstream's attention has now turned to such journalists. In recent weeks, the BBC has made contact and sought to vilify and undermine efforts that have exposed intelligence agencies supporting the White Helmets. Well, I think the most extraordinary aspect of uh, the list, of the, the, the litany of accusations that came in and character assassination from um, the BBC producer, um, was the final point which in which they effectively threatened me with legal action. So it appears now that the BBC is demonstrating brazenly that it is nothing more than an extension of uh, state power. It is not um, performing its job as an agent of the people, which of course it should do as any media outlet should do. Threatening journalists on the ground exposes a fragility that's seen across the mainstream media. The emergence of social media and alternate sources has broken the monopoly of information that Western powers enjoyed unchallenged for decades. For many, the leaks that exposed the OPCW report were the straw that broke the camel's back. Just how many international bodies were working in tandem using falsified information to justify war and Western aggression? What does this say about outlets like the BBC who pushed this narrative to the public? What does this tell us about what they're now saying regarding China or Russia and even the Islamic Republic of Iran?